the bridge. Uh, in order to get to the bridge, I want to go back and just say a few more things about uh, voyages and about Crane uh, in general. <coughs> uh, in uh, Crane's letter to uh, the distressed editor of Poetry magazine, Harriet Monroe, uh, that prose uh, uh, selection included in the, the uh, back of your book, <coughs> Crane defends his poem at Melville's tomb and uh, specifically defends, uh, well, uh, what he calls uh, his uh, recourse to the logic of metaphor. Um, what, what does the logic of metaphor mean for Crane? Well, um, he um, distinguishes uh, his criteria from Monroe's on page 968. Uh, you know, he says, my poem may well be uh, elliptical and actually obscure, <coughs> but in your criticism uh, you've stated your objections in terms that allow me the privilege of claiming your ideas and ideals as theoretically at least quite outside the issues of my own aspirations. And he says, to put it more plainly, as a poet I may very possibly be more interested in the so-called illogical impingements of the connotations of, well, that's a misprint, I, it should be words, on the consciousness and their combinations and interplay in metaphor on this basis then I am interested in the preservation of their logically rigid significations. Uh, Crane is talking here about, um, well, uh, putting a kind of priority in his poetry on connotation uh, over denotation. Uh, he's interested in the ways words relate to and through other words before or in addition to the ways in which they relate to uh, the things of the world. In this sense, uh, Crane uh, well introduces us to uh, a sense of poetry as, um, as a linguistic environment that uh, uh, is constructed through uh, words uh, relating among themselves uh, in ways that play upon our um, uh, imagination, systems of association uh, that in, in effect solicit our contribution to uh, complete uh, the thought, <coughs> uh, all of which supposes and seeks a kind of special intimacy uh, with us as readers, um, gives us um, work to do. Um, I, I suggested that the sea is a kind of figure or, or metaphor in Crane's work for this linguistic space, um, an imaginative space uh, to which we are summoned. Uh, in a poem like At Melville's Tomb, uh, he's, cons he's concerned with specifically um, how uh, messages are transported um, with uh, the uh, um, uh, well, what he calls the dice of drowned men's bones. Um, you can understand the, the, uh, the poem as an elegy for Melville. Uh, it's also uh, about reading Melville uh, and getting his message uh, that is reaching back into uh, the past and becoming for Melville the kind of reader that Crane himself seeks uh, as he describes it uh, in um, uh, his letter to Monroe. Uh, in talking about Voyages 2, I suggested that the, or uh, Voyages 3 rather, the third section of the poem, I, I suggested that the image of infinite consanguinity was uh, in part an image of this linguistic mixing and promiscuity uh, that Crane is interested in, uh, in, in poetry. In this poem, uh, the mixing of words in poetry is analogized to the mixing of, uh, body of bodies of lovers. Uh, love here is also like death uh, because it's a, a shattering experience uh, through which uh, the self uh, is remade uh, and changed um, with 
and through another. Uh, this is a process of transformation. Uh, it's one that Crane calls transmemberment, um, which is uh, a way of evoking not so much a sharing of identity, but rather some kind of exchange of it, uh, which is an experience of the self changed uh, and the self redeemed. Uh, in, in Crane's eyes, this is exactly what the wasteland um, uh, contemplates and draws back from, uh, doesn't uh, embrace, turns away from. It's what in Crane uh, love <coughs> promises. It's what poetry, song promises. Uh, the, uh, the space of the poem, which is uh, like, as Crane imagines it, uh, a space of love, is set apart from ordinary life. Um, you uh, uh, might uh, contrast the kind of song and singing uh, that you find in this poem with uh, Eliot's love song for Prufrock. <coughs> uh, Crane recovers in this poem uh, a kind of heroic blank verse, uh, the medium of heroic drama. Uh, and uses it for the speech of a poet lover who celebrates the power of sound to make its own sense through the affirming force of desire. Uh, he imagines this again as a kind of resurrection of some kind. What he, what he talks about is what has to happen after the wasteland. Uh, in this sense, uh, Crane is, is talking about some kind of passage through death. Uh, and you can understand that death as Crane's admission, as I suggested last time, of the um, uh, illusory nature of um, uh, rhetoric, uh, of, um, of love uh, itself, of the power of uh, desire, <coughs> which uh, uh, Crane uh, is always realistic about, you, you could say. <coughs> um, the, the poem, Voyages, uh, treats um, its theme is really the triumph of desire, uh, even in defeat. Uh, that's also uh, the, the, um, the theme of At Melville's Tomb, and it's the grand theme of The Bridge. Uh, the Bridge is Crane's great poem uh, about America. Uh, we'll, uh, let me bring up a picture of him. This is, uh, this is Crane in 1927 on the, or 28, uh, it's un unclear exactly when the photo was taken by Walker Evans, a uh, great American photographer and Crane's friend, uh, on top of um, 110 Columbia Heights where Crane lived uh, in view of Manhattan and uh, the bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, the bridge is Crane's uh, great poem about America, or about the idea of America, and I'll say more about what that means uh, in a moment. Uh, and it's a reply, uh, self-consciously so, uh, to the wasteland. Uh, I, I suggested that the shortness of the wasteland was uh, in some ways, um, a kind of argument against epic uh, in the modern world, uh, uh, an argument uh, about the impossibility of epic vision in a culture which lacks uh, shared myths, shared symbols. Uh, against this, this lack, uh, Crane proposes uh, the bridge. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge uh, as a kind of central organizing symbol uh, for modern culture. Um, <coughs> the, uh, uh, this, this is a picture of the bridge being built um, uh, in uh, the 19th century. Uh, it's important that as Crane uh, looks at the bridge uh, as, a, as a modern symbol, that we remember that it wasn't built in 1920. I, well, I've, I've forgotten now the, the year in which it is. Uh, but it was uh, at least, I think, 60 years old at this point. And you can see when uh, uh, Roebling's Bridge uh, was first created, there's no Manhattan skyline for it to reach to. Uh, when Crane um, um, turns to the bridge as a symbol of the modern, he's already looking back to an earlier vision of the modern, 
uh, if you like. Uh, and in doing so, he is uh, joining many other American artists. This is a photograph uh, by uh, Walker Evans, uh, who, who took uh, many images uh, of the, uh, the bridge um, with its uh, cables and uh, Gothic uh, arches, all of which uh, play into uh, Crane's poems in complex ways. Uh, this is the, the very great poem, one of many pa uh, poem painting uh, by uh, uh, Joseph Stella that uh, appears in the Yale Gallery. A fantastic work, uh, one that Crane hadn't seen actually when he began uh, the bridge, but which in all sorts of ways um, uh, is is uh, harmonious with, with his vision, including um, the ways in which uh, the, the uh, sublime uh, vision uh, that it uh, offers uh, includes uh, darkness uh, and, and, I would have to say, uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, frightening or, or um, um, sinister elements. Um, it is uh, also um, importantly, a moment in American art when um, artists like uh, Stella, uh, like uh, Crane, are interested. Uh, here's uh, Joseph Marin uh, uh, with another image, uh, this one painted from the bridge, uh, are in which artists are creating a kind of uh, idiom that involves, includes abstraction. Uh, shows us uh, images of uh, the world in realist representation that are being transformed into uh, something uh, semi-abstract and symbolic. <coughs> uh, Crane is, is very much uh, involved in the same kind of uh, activity as these artists. These are more images uh, uh, from Evans. Uh, these, of course, shot from underneath the bridge and, and showing it uh, uh, as a kind of abstract uh, form uh, rising uh, into uh, uh, the uh, New York skyline. Um, <coughs> this, is, uh, this is the uh, title page of, of Crane's uh, poem as it appeared in the uh, uh, Black Sun uh, edition, a limited edition uh, in Paris in 1930, uh, its uh, uh, first publication, followed uh, shortly thereafter by publication in New York. Crane took the Brooklyn Bridge uh, as, a m as a kind of symbol of a structure, the structure of a spiritual action as he understood it underpinning American history. It seemed to him uh, to embody an idea that he saw variously embodied in American history. Uh, for Crane, American history is a series of new world visions, uh, all of them uh, versions or avatars of what he also calls Atlantis. Uh, the city sunk beneath the waves in Platonic myth uh, that promises to return uh, and return us to some kind of redeemed community. Uh, Atlantis is Crane's name for uh, a kind of promised relation to the world uh, that's been uh, glimpsed but also lost. Uh, to aim at Atlantis, uh, as the poem does, and as Crane says American history does, uh, is to go, interestingly, confusingly, simultaneously into the past and into the future. Uh, to rescue or recover something from history promised for the future uh, and to bring that future into being. Crane understands uh, the mythic work of the poem his poem, uh, as a kind of act of crossing, uh, one that has this kind of chronological mission of going back into the past and forward into the future. The uh, title page here, uh, you can't make it out, but it's uh, in um, uh, uh, clear in your uh, anthology, carries 
uh, an epigraph from the book of Job, uh, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Uh, the the um, um, epigraph from Job introduces these two motions as being essential to uh, Crane's imagination in the poem. That is, going to and fro, back and forth, and by going up and down. <laughs> uh, you can see uh, these two motions, uh, in fact, um, um, easily uh, visualizable in the form of the bridge itself, which uh, drives its pylons uh, into the river uh, and rises up in these Gothic structures in order to carry uh, people back and forth um, across uh, the river. <coughs> uh, the the uh, epigraph is also a kind of joke. Uh, because Crane wrote this poem, uh, like Job, tramping around uh, across uh, the, uh, the Northeast uh, from uh, one apartment or house to another, uh, or one couch uh, to uh, another, uh, and uh, wrote it in Europe uh, and uh, California uh, and elsewhere, um, himself, Crane, being um, uh, um, without um, uh, secure uh, station uh, in, in um, uh, the poem, uh, in the, the writing of the poem. Uh, Crane's um, interest in the poem uh, in uh, hobos uh, and marginals uh, of, uh, of many kinds, uh, as well as with pioneers and other kinds of travelers, uh, all um, represent um, um, figures uh, of spiritual questers who are, um, in a sense, without um, uh, a station in, in life, but rather in motion, as um, uh, Crane himself was. The, um, this is the table of contents uh, of the poem. Uh, it's helpful, I think, to uh, uh, look at it because it's confusing. Um, <coughs> it, it, uh, the poem consists in this uh, proem, which I'll, I'll talk about in a few moments, uh, when Crane actually dedicates his long poem, actually dedicates his poem to the Brooklyn Bridge, as if you could dedicate a poem to the bridge, to an object. <coughs> uh, a first section called Ave Maria, which is spoken by Columbus. Uh, Columbus, not on his way to the New World, but rather on his way back. Uh, he speaks to us uh, on his way back, uh, and it introduces the theme of uh, carrying uh, the message or the vision forward into uh, the future. Um, the question of you know, how to retrieve or recover um, uh, the, uh, the vision of the New World uh, is initially uh, introduced there. Uh, then there's a, a, a section called Powhatan's Daughter, uh, which refers to Pocahontas, uh, invokes um, a uh, um, uh, vision of the American continent uh, through a series of poems, uh, The Harbor Dance, Van Winkle, uh, the, the River, The Dance, and Indiana. Uh, which all uh, explore various moments in the history of um, the uh, um, uh, um, conquering of the continent. Uh, there's a section called Cuddy Sark, uh, which um, uh, introduces us to a um, um, uh, drunken uh, visionary uh, sailor in a bar uh, on uh, Sand Street uh, in uh, Lower Manhattan. Uh, that figure seems to metamorphose uh, into uh, Walt Whitman in the um, uh, section for Cape Hatteras, in a sense, the center of the poem. Uh, Cape Hatteras uh, is concerned with um, the um, invention of flight. Uh, and uh, uh, it links uh, Whitman um, to, um, uh, well, really, uh, the whole history of uh, American uh, invention. 
there are uh, a series of songs called Three Songs, um, uh, another section called Quaker Hill, uh, evoking um, in 1920s um, uh, New York suburb, uh, really, or, or Connecticut Hills, uh, which um, uh, brings us up to uh, the present, uh, as does the poem uh, The Tunnel, uh, the tunnel being that most closely based on the wasteland uh, and describing a kind of infernal journey through the New York subways. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, Atlantis, uh, a kind of uh, visionary uh, rhapsody that uh, invokes the uh, uh, object of quest that the poem is concerned with. Uh, the poem, as uh, in this way, charts various journeys uh, westward and eastward, uh, back and forth uh, in time. Um, discovery means nothing without the relaying of the vision, the kind of carrying it forward. Uh, the bridge <coughs> is uh, concerned with in these various sections with a series of, of um, well, a series of symbols, um, symbols that are very frequently vehicles or transports uh, from uh, Columbus's ship to uh, the subway <coughs> to the Wright brothers' uh, airplanes. Uh, transport. Uh, this is, in a sense, the grand theme of the bridge. Uh <coughs> The root meaning of metaphor is to carry something over, to transport it. Uh, crane is, is uh, um, for Crane, metaphor is as central um, a concept and activity uh, as translation is for pound. But in uh, Crane, the emphasis is on imaginative transformation. That's really what uh, metaphor has to offer. Uh, the central symbol of the bridge, the bridge itself, you could understand as a, as a metaphor for metaphor, uh, a metaphor for a primary human capacity, uh, uh, the capacity to posit an object of desire. Frosted eyes there were that lifted altars. Uh, to posit uh, an object of desire that expands the horizon of the real what's possible, uh, and in so doing uh, violates uh, existing systems of cognition uh, and projects the vision of a new world. Uh, this also means that the poem is constantly producing new symbols for this activity, new metaphors. Uh, Crane said at, uh, in one letter, the bridge in becoming a ship, a world, a woman, a tremendous harp, as it finally does, seems really to have a career, uh, and so it does. Um, this is, um, the, again, the Black Sun edition, which I, I recommend that you go to Beinecke and look. It's one of the most beautiful books uh, I know. Uh, it's a great big book with these um, big margins uh, and uh, red um, uh, headings. Uh, let's look at the poem. Uh, as both a, an introduction to the poem and as a, a kind of um, summary uh, in, in miniature of its uh, intentions, uh, claims, procedures. How many dawns chill from his rippling rest, the seagull's wings shall dip and pivot him, shedding white rings of tumult, building high over the Chain Bay Waters Liberty. Then, with inviolate curve, forsake our eyes, as apparitional as sails that cross some page of figures to be filed away, till elevators drop us from our day. The poem begins with another uh, resurrection of some kind. In this case, not a seal rising from uh, the water to uh, gaze uh, toward paradise, but rather a, a seagull uh, rising as many times before. How many dawns chill from his rippling rest? Uh, and this, this seagull becomes a kind of um, uh, image of ascent uh, and, and flight. 
uh, uh, the the I guess uh, um, uh, it, it is an initial image of transport. <coughs> uh, the bird sheds white rings of tumult, uh, and there's that word from Voyages Three. Uh, remember, and where death, if shed, presumes no carnage but the single change. Here uh, again, there's an action of shedding as the bird throws off the darkness of the night and rises, uh, building high, uh, then disappears. The vision vanishes. We are in the world of work. Uh, we are in the office spaces of lower Manhattan till elevators drop us from our day. And if we've just gone up, now we go down again. I think of cinema's panoramic slights with multitudes bent towards some flashing scene never disclosed, but hastened to again, foretold to other eyes on the same screen. Uh, the movie theater. Uh, the movie theater is a new machine of transport uh, in the 20s, uh, a kind of mass entertainment that Crane's poem will, in a sense, try to rival and, and, and provide uh, a uh, um, complementary uh, uh, way of uh, imagining a collective vision. Uh, and he, what he offers next is the bridge, uh, which he uh, addresses in this archaic language, uh, archaic and intimate language, as if uh, Brooklyn Bridge could have a subjectivity. And the, he says, across the harbor, silver paced as if the light on the bridge uh, um, were being seen as a kind of movement that the bridge was itself involved in. Uh, as though the sun took step of thee, yet left some motion ever unspent in thy stride, implicitly thy freedom staying thee. Uh, this, is a <laughs> this is a wild kind of address to uh, architecture. <coughs> uh, as if the bridge were animate uh, uh, with the power of motion. Uh, and as if it had a kind of motion that was fountain-like and could not be exhausted. Then suddenly we're given another uh, vision. <coughs> uh, <coughs> the, uh, uh, the threat of suicide suddenly rises up uh, in the poem. Out of some subway scuttle, cell or loft, a bedlamite speeds to thy parapets, Tilting there momently, shrill shirt ballooning, a jest falls from the speechless caravan. Uh, the possibility of failure seems dialectically to be written into this poem's grand uh, ambition. Uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's wish for uh, ascent and, and redemption. Uh, Crane uh, turns then uh, to uh, images of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the bridge in uh, the New York skyline. Down wall from girder into street, noon leaks, a rip tooth of the skies acetylene. All afternoon the cloud flown derricks turn, thy cables breathe the North Atlantic still, as if it were a kind of ship. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I uh, am thrilled every time I read uh, Crane's uh, uh, language uh, of for evoking the, uh, the kind of sensual power uh, of uh, New York architecture. O harp and altar of the fury fused, how could mere toil align thy choiring strings? It's the bridge is harp and altar instrument of music and site of worship, terrific threshold of the prophet's pledge, prayer of pariah and the lover's cry. Again, the traffic lights that skim thy swift, unfractioned idiom, immaculate sigh of stars, beating thy path, condense eternity. And we have seen night lifted in thine arms. Under thy shadow, by the piers I waited. Only in darkness is thy shadow clear. The city's fiery parcels all undone, 
already snow submerges an iron year. O oh, sleepless is the river under thee, vaulting the sea, the prairies dreaming sod. Suddenly the bridge crosses the Atlantic, it crosses uh, the uh, American continent. Unto us lowliest, and now it's a kind of divinity that he beseeches to descend, and of the curve ship, of the bridge itself seen as a kind of vehicle of a curve ship, lend a myth to God. Uh, the, poem <coughs> the poem means to uh, incorporate uh, the threat of failure and the threat of death. <coughs> Uh, and move beyond it, uh, much as it aims to incorporate um, the wasteland's despair and move uh, beyond it. Uh, it is a kind of jest, a kind of prayer, a kind of pledge that belongs to lover or pariah. Um, these are our speech acts that um, are models for the kind of poem that you're reading. Uh, the intention is to somehow create from a series of fragments a whole that would be an unfractioned idiom, as Crane calls it, which would be a kind of pure and redeemed language. Uh, there's that phrase in the last stanza, of the curve ship, meaning uh, both derived from the, the bridge, uh, I think, and, and partaking uh, of it. Uh, he asks the bridge to lend a myth to God. Lend, you know, to lend is, is to uh, give, knowing it will be uh, given back. <coughs> uh, this is not a permanent uh, name for God. It is not the one symbol for God. Uh, it is only uh, one in an ongoing series of acts of naming which are all acts of metaphor, uh, which are all acts uh, by which uh, something from the past is joined to the future, something far is joined with something near, out of some kind of spiritual need or vision. Well, the poem was uh, begun, uh, Crane liked this idea, both ends at once, just the way you build a bridge. Uh, by writing the proem and by writing uh, Atlantis, and gradually, uh, over time, uh, moving towards uh, the middle. Um, the, um, this is uh, the final section, uh, Atlantis. In fact, why don't we turn there for a moment. Uh, this, this is this kind of splendid, outrageous, um, uh, Shellian uh, uh, lyric speech. Uh, through the bound cable strands, the arching path upward, veering with light, the flight of strings. And you can image now uh, in your minds that great Stella painting um, over in the gallery. Uh, Taut miles of shuttling moonlight syncopate the whispered rush telepathy of wires. Up the index of night, granite and steel, transparent meshes, fleckless the gleaming staves. Sibylline voices flicker, waveringly stream as though a god were issue of the strings. Um, here, uh, at the end of the poem, uh, Crane imagines a kind of ascent uh, through the structure of the bridge, which becomes a grand musical instrument, a harp. Um, the um, uh, visionary uh, appears here. Uh, in fragmentary ways, as in line 25, where uh, sheerly the eyes, like seagulls stung with rhyme, uh, slit and propelled by glistening fins of light. Uh, Crane talks here about the eyes moving up uh, through this structure, uh, like the seagull that we saw in the first line of the poem. Um, the 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 object of desire, the, the uh, 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 version of paradise Crane offers us is there in, in line 42 or so, uh, where he talks about the bridge as vision of the voyage, 
bridge lifting night to cycloramic, it should be uh, crest of deepest day. Uh, o choir translating time into what multitudinous verb the suns and synergy of waters ever fuse, as if somehow the sun and water on the space of the uh, bridge and beneath it uh, created what Crane calls a multitudinous verb, recast in myriad syllables, Psalm of Cathay. That's, of course, Columbus's goal, Cathay. Um, o love, thy white pervasive paradigm. It's also a vision of love. Um, here, um, Crane gives us a kind of vision of the word, the multitudinous verb, as what his poem uh, draws its uh, energy from and what it moves towards. Uh, it is not a Christian word, uh, importantly. Uh, it, is, it, it is, I think, uh, a name for, for a creative process that's accessed in and through our powers of language. Uh, the word in Crane's poem uh, is secular and historical, uh, but yet it unfolds from what he calls an ever-presence beyond time, uh, towards which the poem is, is, is questing. Uh, it is a, a, a creativity, a kind of power of world-making uh, that's embodied in our language. <coughs> Crane is uh, imagining a post-Christian religion uh, for which America provides iconography and myths. Uh, the poem is a, an encyclopedia of American places and American culture, uh, popular culture uh, in, in, uh, in burlesque, uh, in National Winter Garden, in the river, in Virginia. There's slang, jazz, advertising, all of that worked into the poem. Uh, the poem combines a kind of popular storybook history of figures like Rip Van Winkle and uh, the most challenging abstract modernist poetics at the same time. Uh, every line is, is loaded with uh, symbols and reference linking up to other lines in the same way. Uh, in the same way, Crane is suggesting uh, that every moment uh, in American history links up with others uh, and with a larger structure of action uh, of which it is part. Uh, Crane's poem is therefore, uh, I, I think, uh, at once knowingly naive and hyper-sophisticated, uh, both of these uh, uh, things at once. <coughs> <coughs> uh, Crane composed the poem uh, through the funding, with the funding of Otto Kahn, a uh, businessman, philanthropist. Uh, and he explains his outline of the poem uh, at um, uh, still a relatively early period of composition in that letter to Otto Kahn that I included for you last time. Um, he, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll refer to it uh, uh, briefly. Uh, the, um, uh, keeping in mind that table of contents I, I showed you before, there's a kind of story of American history uh, told in large, uh, or in, in the poem, in which Crane moves from uh, Columbus to uh, the uh, uh, section called Powhatan's uh, Daughter, uh, where the theme is the betrayal of the land uh, in the conquest of the continent. Uh, in the middle, uh, in, in Cape Hatteras, uh, when Crane is, is writing about uh, invention and technology uh, in American culture, his theme is also the Civil War uh, and World War I. Uh, again, a kind of uh, betrayal of vision by which technology becomes a uh, means to kill. Uh, in um, his letter to Kahn, uh, he talks about having a section on John Brown that would take up the topic of slavery. Uh, this section was never written, but there are traces of it you find in uh, the section called The River. Uh, in each of these sections, uh, Crane turns to uh, and, and looks to, um, uh, uh, again, hobos, marginal figures who are uh, 
emblems of lost promise who um, uh, seem to represent possibilities uh, included in but also <coughs> marginalized by uh, American uh, history, American culture. You can understand these figures, such as the sailor that you meet in Cuddy Sark, as versions of the authors to whom Crane appeals throughout through allusion and epigraph. Uh, Melville, uh, Dickinson, uh, Poe in the tunnel. Uh, Crane reaches back to these authors, canonical for us, authors that you study, but that were uh, uh, largely left out of accounts of American literary history in the 1920s, who themselves appeared to be marginals. Um, these, uh, these are, are versions of a kind of um, uh, community that Crane wants to recover and carry forward uh, for the uh, creative promise that they seem to uh, embody. Well, um, let me um, just point to uh, the poem's, let's say, uh, two different endings. Um, the uh, history of the composition of the poem is different from the uh, uh, sequence uh, that you read. Uh, because Crane began at both ends, uh, the end of the poem is really, uh, in one sense, the middle. Uh, when Crane completes Cape Hatteras at last, after um, uh, struggling uh, with this section uh, for a couple years, um, he uh, uh, completes uh, the span of the bridge in one uh, particular uh, uh, image, one, one sense, and that's uh, towards the uh, end of, of the section on 636. Uh, and he, he invokes uh, and quotes Whitman, Whitman again, uh, uh, here seen as a kind of uh, marginal uh, who is uh, recovered for American culture through the poem's uh, imaginative act. Um, Whitman is addressed, recorders ages hence, that's a quote from, from Whitman's Calamus poems, uh, recorders ages hence, yes, they shall hear in their own veins uncancelled thy sure tread, Whitman, uh, and read thee by the oriole, the halo round thy head of pasture shine, panis angelicus, uh, bread of angels. Uh, here, uh, uh, Whitman's um, Whitman becomes a kind of figure for um, a kind of secular communion. Yes, Walt, afoot again and onward without halt, not soon nor suddenly, no, never to let go my hand in yours, Walt Whitman. <coughs> so uh, that is, that's a, a kind of uh, moment when in this hand clasp uh, a certain um, uh, aspiration of the poem uh, is completed uh, and, and a connection uh, to uh, the past is uh, achieved uh, and asserted. The um, conclusion of the poem that we find in um, uh, uh, at the end of Atlantis uh, is is another uh, vision, uh, and I'll uh, conclude with that. <coughs> um, it's I think uh, something to be contrasted with this triumphant and reassuring. Um, um, conclusion that uh, Cape Hatteras offers. Uh, here, well, here are the last two sublime stanzas of the poem. Migrations that must needs void memory, inventions that cobblestone the heart, unspeakable thou bridge to thee, O love. Thy pardon for this history, whitest flower, O answerer of all, anemone. Now while thy petals spend the suns about us, hold, O thou whose radiance doth inherit me, Atlantis, hold thy floating singer late. Here Atlantis is brought into being with uh, the singer himself on the verge of drowning, thy floating singer. And then finally uh, uh, Crane dedicates himself to this uh, vision which uh, he calls ever-presence. So to thine ever-presence beyond time, 
like spears ensanguined of one tolling star that bleeds infinity. The Orphic strings, now the uh, cables of the bridge have become the strings of Orpheus's lyre. Sidereal phalanxes leap and converge, and again you can see the structure of the, the bridge imaged there. One song, one bridge of fire. Is it Cathay? Now pity steeps the grass and rainbows ring, the serpent with the eagles in the leaves. Whispers antiphonal in azure swing. The poem ends uh, with this question, is it Cathay? Columbus's question, uh, an error, a mistake. Uh, it is the nature of the object of desire to be misnamed, uh, precisely because it has no one name. Uh, and even in this uh, error, this kind of uh, defeat, um, there is for Crane uh, an affirming of the scope of desire, precisely through its failure uh, to be contained by a single reference. Well, we'll stop now. Um, and uh, I know you have um, done your work and, and gathered a, 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 a note. Uh, we'll um, collect these uh, and um, uh, put together our own annotated version of the poem.